Hello, can you hear me and see me? Is the video okay? Of course, just as I'm starting my stream, I'm starting to cough, so sorry about that. Where am I going to put this? <laughs> Yay! So we've got a couple, I'm going to wait a couple minutes. How are, how is everyone? I have so many drinks with me today. I have water. I have honey with soy milk. This is why I asked Eve about the maple syrup because I tried to do what Eve does on her live stream and make a maple syrup um and soy drink for the live stream and i pulled out my soy milk and it was furry so it's a scottish heather honey instead and then i have triple ginger tea that's what it's called and some more water hopefully i'll be okay is the volume okay Yeah, the heather honey is really nice. It's so nice. My local greengrocer has them and it's so nice that I actually have to export them to Japan for my mom. And it's like my go-to like Mother's Day, birthday, Christmas present because she loves them so much. And it's really expensive for her to buy the same jar of honey over there. Right, so it's gone two minutes past three, so I'm going to start. Today's, uh, today's live stream is going to be about the Holbein introductory um, colour set. It's a six tube. Now, you know how much I love Holbein watercolours. Um, they're a Japanese company and so I support them as much as I can because I'm obviously Japanese as well. And I also think that they do a good range of paints. However, I don't think these are the best selection of colors. A for beginner watercolorist, because that's what it's supposed to be for. If it's an introductory set, it's to introduce watercolor art to beginners. And I don't think it's a very good representation of what the Holbein watercolor as a range can offer. And I know like, sorry, I'm going to cough. Okay, oh dear, I'm sorry about that. If I end up coughing too much, I'm just going to cut this short and make a video instead because it's not going to be fun for you guys to have to listen to me cough or pause. Right, so what was I saying? Um, so I know Eve's tried it. I know Dan has had a lot of problems trying to get nice, clear, bright colours out of this set. And the problem is it's not a very good it's not a very well designed set. I love Holbein paints, but sometimes I look at Holbein's like range of colors they put in their sets and I go, ah, I think you can do better. Like you've got way better colors. So today we're going to talk a bit about why this set or this color, the isn't the, these colors aren't the best 
that they could put in their introductory set and um, I'm also then going to go through some other options that we can have instead that is that will be a easier for beginners to use and be a better representation of the beautiful colors Holbein does offer so and then I've made lots and lots of these color chart things so that um, we can pick colors to try and fill in these charts as well as much as time allows it are we all up for that while I have a drink yeah it's a really weird starter set and I think it's about 18 pounds in Jackson's I've seen it on Amazon for basically 40, uh, 40 pounds including shipping which is just ridiculous please don't buy that my general advice to you in whole buying paints is never pay the Jackson's price or I've heard that in America some places are really expensive as well so while I wait for you guys to um, decide whether that's a cool thing or not hello everybody by the way hello Eve hello Ian hello Paolo hello Marina hello Kelly hello Kaiser hello Moa have I missed anyone hello Africa Africa has the coolest name um, bestie boy I think that's it have I missed anyone yes the um, super thin masking tape is really good this I use the three millimeter thick one and basically that just allows me to fill in all the squares in one go you know without having to skip <laughs> like squares because it just gives it enough border for me to not go over and spill into like other wet colors so they are really really good I love them I don't know why I waited this long to have them but they are awesome Ooh, they sell Holbein in Thailand that's cool okay so let's get on with it the introductory set okay so the biggest problem I have with it is my general philosophy and this is just my own opinion but if you have if you have to narrow it down to six tubes and specifically six tubes then I don't understand why people don't just go for the split complementary palette which is the palette I created for the Tiger travel kit let me see if I can find it for you so this is the little travel kit and without going into like huge huge details basically the split complementary palette basically has how many times can I say it basically it has like two yellows two red magentas and two blues and what you do is you pick a cool yellow which is like your lemony colors and a warm yellow which is like more of an orangey yellow and then you pick a cool pink or cool red or cool magenta which is like your more magenta -y colors and then a warm red which is like a more orangey red and then I messed this bit up <laughs> then you pick a cool blue which I always get the blues mixed up but it's actually the thalo blue so and a warm blue which is like your ultramarine blues and stuff and what this allows you to do is a create like an infinite number of colors because they're two did I say split complementary I meant split primary split primaries so you have like a set of primaries and if you have the three primary colors you can create any color you want but by making it a split so you have warm and cool of each complement it each primary 
um, you are able to create much clearer, brighter colors. I'm really sorry I'm getting a bit confused. I hit my head on a shelf really hard about an hour ago. So I might be a bit dizzy today. So please bear with me with my coughing and me getting confused. Right, how are you doing in chat? Oh, hello, loads of new people coming in. Hello, hello, hello. Do we have any questions so far? Maybe about the split primary palette. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if I have given myself a concussion or not. Um, but I promise if I start feeling out, I will um, cut this stream short and go and rest instead. Yes, thank you e, for the reminder. Um, because the chat moves quite fast, if you could just write question in capitals and then like your normal question in normal font. If you have a question, that would be awesome because it just means I can see it better. And if I like, don't answer it, I probably missed your question. So what was Vivian's question? Time delays are so much fun. How are you guys while I wait? <laughs> Are you having a good day? While I wait, by the way, did you guys know Eve, my lovely, wonderful moderator that works so hard in the chat, she is actually doing a live interview. She's the one being interviewed on Martin Owen's cha uh, channel uh, today. I can't remember what time in like North America time, but it is like 3 p 3 a.m. Uh, my time, like Greenwich Mean Time. So I won't be able to see it and I really, really sadly won't be able to support her. But I really hope for those of you guys who are going to be awake at that time to go and check out her interview and give her more support because uh, I, I do believe she's... Um, going on camera like she's actually her face is going on camera so I'm so excited for her not only for like being so brave and showing her face but also like being interviewed by like Marty Owens who has a huge channel so be sure to go and check that out this evening if you can Yeah, you know what, Eve, first time is always the hardest. And then after that, it gets a lot easier. So this is as hard as it's ever going to get, and you will do fine. Right, question. What stores in Japan that always have whole wine in their stock? Sekaido. Just Sekaido, Sekaido. Uh, Sekaido is in, I think, Shinjuku? And it is, like, the heavenliest, most amazing art supply store. And... They always have the full range of Holbein watercolors and their gouache and Turner's watercolors and Turner's acrylic gouache and stuff. So if you are shopping in Tokyo for art supplies, then just go to Sekaido because, and also they are incredibly, incredibly cheap. They do it at about 20% off if you they get their membership card. So it's really worth getting the membership card and getting that 20% off. And then they also give you money off coupons at the end of each transaction. So it is so good. Question, what is your favorite Daniel Smith colors? Uh, Quinacridone Rose and followed by Quinacridone Turquoise. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Right, so the problem with this palette is you do have the warm red in your vermilion hue 
your cool red in your scallop lake you do have a warm yellow in your permanent yellow deep and then your cool i have to always think about this in your cool blue with your cobalt blue hue however it's entirely missing a cool yellow and a warm blue and the problem i'll show you the problem no i'll show you the um color chart first this is the color chart let me just get the focus right for you how are we doing there that will do so this is the color chart for mixing the six colors into each other and you can see there is a lot of muddy colors and besides the actual you know colors that are already in the set itself mixing wise apart from like the ones next to it well even that is kind of really really muted you don't get many clean colors compared to like what we call muddy colors which is basically just more muted neutralized tones and more muted neutralized tones are very important but also we like the bright colors right and it's better to have palettes that can provide you with a good ratio of both and also be able to like help you understand what colors will and won't work in creating bright color mixes because i know one of the problems dan kept having was that you know he kept getting these colors when he wanted these colors and it's just things like you do get a decent purple and orange but there's not a huge range of blues and there's not a huge range of greens either and the problem with not having a split primary palette is this so these are how to make the secondary colors the secondary colors are what you get when you mix primary colors uh, the orange the purple and the green and they are lots of different combinations of colors you can mix to create that and basically like for orange you can mix either a cool or a warm yellow with a cool or warm red and it's the same for purple you can do cool blue cool warm blue warm red and cool red and with the green you can mix either cool yellow or warm yellow with warm blue with cool blue when you don't have all six of like the of when you don't have the cools and warms of all primaries you actually end up missing quite a lot so for this palette this is what we get and oh we are a bit bright aren't we sorry hang on let me just deal with that first that's better Thank you for the link for Sekaido. It's the Mecca. Please go and visit if you're there. Right. Are we good? Yep. Yeah. So, with the Holborn introduction introductory set, you'll end up missing a lot of color possibilities, which I think is the bigger problem in not having a split primary palette then whether it's muddy or more muted or bright or what because you're always going to get um brighter color mixes and more muted color mixes in any palette but just not having all these other options is really limiting particularly if you are you know wanting to create a huge range of like one color like if you want to do greens for example you only really have one spectrum to work with rather than the full four so this is why I always say that um, the split 
primary palette is the best option if you only have a six tube option. Do you have any questions so far? Okay, um, just because we can get derailed really quickly, just for this stream, could we just stick to questions about Holbein and split primary? Just while I'm doing this, as soon as we move on to like painting the color charts and stuff, then ask away lots of other questions. I just want to get through the lecturing bit <laughs> out the way. So for Vivian and Bestie Boy, would you mind holding on until I start painting and then ask me again and I will definitely answer your questions for you. Yeah, Articraft Alchemy says that they get the blues confused all the time and really struggle to pick which is warm or cool and I totally get that because I had it completely confused until I made this set and Eve pointed out that I had the blues wrong and I was like, no, surely not. But I do have this, <coughs> oh, coughing. Hello, sorry about that. I love the mute buttons. Right, so let's see if these are these. Okay, so this is a color chart that I created from, oh, it's really not focused. Let me focus it for you. I don't like using the autofocus because then it just goes hey, well, while I'm trying to do stuff. There we go. Right, so this is a colour chart that I made, which is a copy of an uh, artist called Nita Leland. She's an amazing teacher and I highly recommend her books. And on one of the books, she has this colour chart that tells you exactly what's cooler and what's warmer. And I actually always have this on my desk because I get confused as well. But basically, the way Eve explained it to me is the with the blues specifically the closer they are to the reds in the color chart color wheel the warmer it is which to me just boggles my mind because instinctively i think like over here is a warmer color <clears throat> than like the ultramarine blues i always thought ultramarine blue was the cooler colors but it's not um the easiest way to remember is that the green is the coolest and the red is the hottest and then it's just how far away you are from those two points and I always remember it as hot Santa cool pine needle so that's how I remember it and I'm still like trying to get my head around it so it's not just you that gets confused as to which one is the more um, cooler and warmer with the blues and I'm pretty sure I'll get confused in the stream so if you notice me getting confused then please let me know so we've seen what this palette can create which is quite a jumble and as somebody just says why have just one yellow yeah you need two yellows rather than yellow and a green So let me show you what I would recommend instead. So first up is yellows. And I'm going to get my big book of wonder. That is my colour chart. And we do the focus. There we go. So for me, a cool yellow, this is all the Holbein colors I have. Let 
me zoom it out a bit. So this is all the um, Holbein colors I have. And uh, this is the full range that Holbein has. Um, like this. And I've rearranged the order into temperature rather than like the weird one that Holbein has and the weird one that Sekaido has and weird one that Jackson has because I think that's more helpful. And I would say with your cool yellows, you want something around about it. Yeah, so your permanent yellow lemon, imidazoline lemon, cadmium yellow lemon, aurelian, and once you get to the imidazole yellow, you'll get into the warmer blues. So that's what I would recommend for the cool yellows. Now for the warm yellow, I would recommend like the from Gamboge Nova, Cad Yellow Deep, Permanent Yellow Deep, and even up to Queen Gold. Naples Yellow, the Holbein's one would be considered a warm yellow. This is Naples Yellow right here. Oh, are you getting buffering? Oh, hang on, let me see if I can lower my... Thank you for letting me know output okay I've just lowered my rate how's that oh I'm sorry it's been buffering are we good all clear so where were we can you just let me know where we were before it started buffering okay so so cool yellows just briefly is round about here. The lemon yellow, permanent yellow lemon, imidazoline yellow, cadmium yellow lemon and aurelian. Once you start getting to the imidazoline yellow and cad yellow, it's kind of like a middle yellow. And so it might get too warm for a cool yellow. For the warm yellow, um, I would recommend something from Gamboche Nova onwards. So Gamboche Nova, Cad Yellow Deep, Permanent Yellow Deep, and even down to the Queen Gold. And I heard someone ask about Naples Yellow. The Holbein's Naples Yellow, I classify as a warm yellow rather than a cool yellow. I know other brands, they produce a much cooler um, Naples Yellow, but for Holbein, it's a warm. For, so what I'm going to do is go through like the color range and just give you an idea of whereabouts in the color wheel you want to stop at for each color and then I have like these tubes that we can test out for us because I thought I could pick one set but because we have like people have lots of different needs and they obviously have favorite colors it's better to like just paint out a few rather and let you guys decide which one you want for your specific need rather than me saying this is the best one because I just don't believe in saying that one thing is the best way for everybody. So for the warm orange, I would say something along here. So brilliant orange, cad red orange, Vermilion, Vermilion Hue, they're all good for the, uh, and you can probably go like Queen uh, Scarlet Lake as well. Scarlet Lake is my warm red in my own palette and probably even Pyro Red, but you're better off sticking to like the more orangier colours. 
big movements pixelate a lot okay thank you it's probably because i lowered the um bit rate frame rate okay let me just close some windows how's that Mm. Is it okay? Are we good? I can dance around. Yay, okay. Sorry about that. I have really um problem with Edinburgh City Centre where I live is that they don't have fibre, which is really annoying. <laughs> so hopefully this should be okay, but we'll see how it goes. Right, so for the I just covered the warm reds. For the cool reds, you have a huge range of options. Um, you can go all the way to like Queen Magenta if you want, but anything from Pyro Rubin, Rose Mather, Crimson Lake, um, Carmine, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Queen Red and Queen Magenta. Uh, question, where do you fit in the earth tones in this new ordering of colours? At the end, do you mean in here? It there at the end so I have yellow to orange to red to pink violets blues turquoise greens and then the all the earthy colors right so that's the reds covered the warm blues <laughs> uh, probably around here like the royal blue I, I know Eve used royal blue for her cool blue uh, and the ultramarine blue deep is a good choice for the cool blue uh, somewhere around here so phthalo blue yellow shade a peacock blue they're good options and that's it so in terms of paint for the cools, I just picked out Aurelian, Academy. Oh, that's not the right one. Hang on. Imidazo Lennon. Which one was I supposed to? Right, let me just get the right one. Sorry. There we go. Got the right one. So with the Holbein set, I noticed that they used a lot of hues rather than use like what's considered the toxic one so i'm going to try stick to that and like not have cadmiums and like not use the vermilion but use the vermilion hue instead as well just so you can stick to their ethos so we have aurelian imidazoline lemon and permanent yellow lemon for the cool lemons let me just get focused Okay, I'm just going to leave it for autofocus for now. If it gets annoying, let me know. Buffering burps. Okay, how's that? It's okay? It's 
So sorry about all this buffering. It is so frustrating. I've literally got one window open for this stream and OBS and that's about it. <laughs> Oh, hold on. Hold on a second. I just need to check something. Yeah, the internet's really slow. No, it'll take too much data. Thank you, though. How are we doing? Are we good? I'm going to play on until you tell me to stop. <laughs> so for the warm reds, I've picked out Gamboge Nova, Permanent Yellow Deep, and then I picked Quinacridone Gold, which I wouldn't normally pick, but I know Eve likes Queen Gold, so I thought, why not throw it in? So that's those yellows. For the cool reds, we have lots and lots of choices. Obviously, we won't get to do everything, but um, Quinacridone Magenta is a good option. Rose Madder, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Pyro Rubin, and... Bleh, no, I'm going to take that one out because I'm not sure. So, those four. For the warm red... We have Scarlet Lake. See, Scarlet, having the reds that they've chosen in their set isn't the problem. It's the fact that it's not a split primary set. So Scarlet Lake, Pyro Red, and I also have Quinacridone Scarlet. And then for the, uh, this, no, no. For the warm blue, I picked out Royal Blue and Ultramarine Deep. And then for the cool blue, I picked out a phthalo blue yellow shade and peacock blue. So I think the first one of chat we do, I'll just pick like what I would normally pick, which is your Aurelian. Uh, probably permanent yellow deep. Power Robin of Quinacridone Magenta. Let's go for Quinacridone Magenta. Scarlet Lake. Ultramarine Deep. And Taylor Blue Yellow Shade. And then we can just put these back up here for now. And then I can take requests on which of those colours to choose for the next one. Do we have any questions while we're here? Ooh, I'm get, getting all dark again. There we go, you can see me better, right? So we have... Ori, Ori, do you guys have any questions? Now is the time. Yeah, Daniel Smith can be, well, any paint can be really expensive if you have to buy it in the wrong country. Which is why I always say, like, don't bother getting Holbein in, like, the UK or, like, maybe America if you can't find a cheaper source. 
um, only like get it if you are like either in Japan, you're going to Japan, or you have friends, very very nice friends <laughs> that will send you some. But this is the same for any kind of brand as well. Like the way to get any good mini palette of six colors is to use the split primary. Right, so I have... Doo -doo -doo. I have my palette. Question, when buying whole one set, is it better to just get the 12 colors or get the 18 one? Oh, thank you, Kim. Um, really, I don't l really like the whole one sets is my honest opinion. I don't think they choose the prettiest of colours, certainly the colours that we would consider in the Western world as nice. You know, like Daniel Smith, their introductory set is a really, um, theirs is split complementary, no primary, and um, they're really, really nice bright colours, whereas their set of colours tend to be a very traditional standard slightly muted what we in Japan would call shibui colors which is like um slightly muted and really intense colors so yeah, in terms of buying watercolors you kind of have to start with where you are and what you have in your country and work with that like i wouldn't be mainly on holbein if i couldn't get it cheap from japan it's just it just doesn't make any financial sense i'd be better off trying to find a more reasonable one that i can buy in the uk right so we've got aurelian first I love um, Hard Wines Aurelian. It's my favorite cool yellow. It's what I have on my palette. And this is the Aurelian that doesn't fade because it's their hue. Whereas if you get the genuine Aurelian, which don't quote me on it, but I think it's PY40, it will fade. I'm currently doing a, a light fast test to show you guys how much it fades. And then this is permanent yellow deep with Aurelian. And then this is going to be Quinacridone Rose. No, Quinacridone Magenta. Holbein doesn't have a Quinacridone Rose. How are you guys doing there in the chat? Scarlet Lake and yellow. And I put way too much Scarlet Lake there. What I don't understand about Jackson price, and I totally understand that it's probably not Jackson's choice, but in Japan, Holbein and, and Turner watercolors are pretty similar in price. So why is there such a huge difference in price in, in like when it gets exported? It's really weird. 
I mean, the the thing about Holbein colors is in Japan, like if you're if you're serious as an artist you know, in water media, then you don't do watercolors. You do Japanese painting instead. Look at that bright green. And so any watercolor brand that we have tend to be more aimed for hobbyist uh, than serious artists. And I keep doing this because I think those labels are really silly. Um, so you don't get like really expensive, really, really top of the line watercolor brands in Japan because all that you know the audience for that kind of bracket goes for the Japanese um, Iwa Enogu paints. Next question. Yeah yeah of course um, this is the time to re-ask questions about totally unrelated things that um, I couldn't answer before. Vivian asks what do you think of Shiminke Horodam? Um, yeah. <laughs> Is <laughs> I don't think I've explored them enough. Um, I have like four tubes of Schmincke Hardam, and I've tried a few more when Shadi sent me some and stuff. But mm, I prefer. I just find their colors a little bit more muted than say Daniel Smith. So yeah, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> It's not my go-to, shall we say. I have, but I do have one go-to color from Schmincke, um, and that is the ultramarine violet because that is the actual correct shade of ultramarine violet to cancel out or neutralize the yellow I use. Um, ultramarine violet can vary in color so much depending on the brand right so we are now on scarlet lake and permanent yellow deep Hi Lana. And having these tapes just makes the job so much easier and I can do it a lot faster for you guys rather than trying to fit in. So like here now, because you have the cool yellow and the warm yellow, the cool blue and the warm blue, you get much bigger selection of greens. This used to be my favorite ever color, Holbein's Kunakudon Magenta, until I met Kunakudon Rose by Daniel Smith. Any more questions? Uh, what do you mean when you say serious Japanese painters will do Japanese painting? Is it Sumie Gansai? It's it's the um the silk one where you paint on silk like uh, Chinese painting. Oh, that's such a nice color. I forget how nice that color is. And you know they make their own paint from pigment with some binder i'm sorry i don't know enough about it but i know that they don't use like this kind of watercolor like say if you are in an art student studying art 
an art school and stuff then if you are serious about water media then you're supposed to be doing Japanese painting instead of the hobbyist watercolor painting which I think is ridiculous but that's the way it is in Japan so that's why you don't get like hugely expensive super duper ones brands of coming out of Japan and um, so the Holbein paints even though they're really good they are priced quite low for what they are like they are about the eighth of the price that Jackson sells them at and again I always you know I, I do always say it's probably not up to Jackson but you know that is a fact so I mean obviously there's shipping and import duty that they have to pay but then why is the Turner one so cheap? Love how bright purples and violets you can get with the quinacridone magenta. Scarlet Lake. So with the warm red, which is a Scarlet Lake you're going to get the more muted purples question where did you get that tape it's so thin i got it from amazon uk but if you just look up three millimeter um masking tape it looks like this and it's just brilliant i don't know why i used to try and paint within the lines when there was a great thing like this available <laughs> so yeah I so don't know why I'm still painting like I don't have the masking tape I'll speed up I'm sorry ultramarine blue There we go. Dan, hello. I am answering your questions. So we just covered for because I know a few people came in and especially Dan just came in and this was like to solve his issue. Um we just went over the introductory set and went through the colors and the colors they make and the problem they have with it, which is that they don't have all six of this split primary set. So here we are, that's all done. I'm just gonna put that down. Oh, sorry for that loud noise. I'm just gonna clean this so that's those are the colors you can get from aurelian permanent yellow deep quay magenta scarlet lake ultramarine blue deep and thalo blue yellow shade which like let me move that out the way You can see that you can get much brighter mixes right and then if you want to get more muted mixes and like you can create all the range of browns you want out of these colors as well which I might make another video about um, how to mix browns from uh, bright primary colors but that is totally doable I'm just cleaning my palette at the same time but that's how you get much brighter colors 
and many more brighter colors and you still get the nice muted ones but then it now becomes more controlled because if you want a bright orange which is a warm color you mix a warm yellow with a warm um, red and if you want a muted orange you mix um, the opposite so the cool orange uh, yellow with the cool red or a combination of like a cool yellow and a warm red or a warm yellow with a cool red and it's the same for all the other secondary colors does that all make sense class <laughs> So this side, this is the set that I made with the intro set. And then this is the set, um, the chart I made with my choice of colors, which are from a split primary palette. This one is Aurelian, Permanent Yellow Deep, Queen Magenta, Scarlet Lake, Ultramarine Blue Deep and sailor blue yellow shade and the great thing about it is the with this chart there's a lot of color combinations missing which is what i said earlier and i'll just go over it again quickly with the secondary colors um you know you get to combine a different combination of cools and yellows of one color with cools and yellow uh, warms of another color and so this would be all the possible color combinations you could create. And with the introductory set, you only get to make, like, because it only has warm yellow, you only get to make half of the oranges possible. With the purple, you only get to make, again, half of the range possible because you only get a cool blue and not a warm blue. And then with the greens, you literally only get to mix um, one out of four possible range. And I know they provide you with a green, but that doesn't make up for all the others either. Whereas with this, you will actually be able to create colors in all the boxes you have here, which is why this split complementary is the best option for a six tube combination. Any questions? So what do you think between these two? What are your feelings about them? Yeah, <laughs> you love them all. Ian, you're modding a US-based YouTube, so you're going to be up at 3 a.m.? Wow. Maybe if I'm coughing all night, I might come online. So that's the first lot. Shall we move on? Do you want me to peel this or do you want me to move on to the second one? Do, do, do. While I wait, I'm going to have my tea. Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty much dry. I can totally build this if you want to see it without the bright blue getting in the way. See? Okay. I'll peel this quickly. Yeah, I mean, I like all colors, and so like sometimes it's hard to pick between palettes. But the good thing with a split complementary is that you have control because of you know which whether you're gonna get a bright color or a muted color because you have all the options. 
and you get to be like making a conscious decision oh this is a warm blue and a and this is a warm red so it's going to make a muted purple for example Sad green. Which one's the sad green? And of course, like, you know, out of one square, you can play with the balance of the two colors involved to make even more range of colors. It's just, you have a choice and you can also get, you know, all the bright colors of secondary colors rather than being dictated by a lack of a particular color. So that's it peeled. Right, let's, shall we move? Oh, hey, hey there, how's your cat? How's Havoc? Did somebody ask, by the way, about how am I liking the um, Ultimo brushes? Did I see that? In case the, um, people did, yes, I love them. I just um, use the Ultimo with the my usual brush of the Proline Pro Plus Pro Art Proline Plus brush in different ways if I want like big washes with quite watery washes then I use the Ultimo and when I want a bit more precision like painting squares then I just use the Proline Plus brushes just because this one has a little bit more control I find so I'm really glad I hope, um, I'm really glad that I have both. Right, so let's move on to a second set of colours. Do you have any requests uh, of the colours I showed you before? Yeah, peeling of tapes is always great, isn't it? Shall we try Eve's palette? Uh, curious to know about what I think about the Daniel Smith PO49 and do I own any PO49 that's an orange <laughs> so probably no depends on what shade of orange let me see if I can find it PO49 how on earth did I get so such a dirty hand? Wait, what colour is PO49? Oh, the Queen Gold, I don't know. And I'm on purposely staying away from them. Um, I have had several people, very, very kind people, like I'm so touched by the generosity offering to give me a sample of their the original coin gold and I've always said no very gratefully but no because I have I know that one of my creative block where I trip over in terms of uh, resistance is if an art supply is limited in some ways so with obviously with the original Daniel Smith Queen Gold it's really hard to get hold of and once that ha like once I have something that is that precious the preciousness sets in and then I just I put too much pressure on myself so I only stick to art supplies that I can get hold of in plentiful quantity or that um, 
are just continuously available commercially so I can always get some new ones so thank you um, to everyone who wants to offer um, like a half pan of the original Queen Gold and the Sap Green but I'm, I very very gratefully and respectfully have to turn you down because just because of my own personal emotional issues with preciousness not because I don't want your paints oh my goodness thank you so much but yeah that's why so I don't have it I'm not gonna have it and so I have no experience you'll have to ask Denise from in liquid color for that one I think right next palette right so we said we're gonna try Eve colors yeah so Queen Gold what cool do you want Eve we got Aurelian Imidazoline Lemon Permanent Yellow Lemon I know your other one is Rose Madder that's easy Palm Yellow Lemon Warm Red Well, you need to pick a uh, and it's, it's Royal Blue right or do you want uh, what's the one you like? Um, marine blue. If it's marine blue, you're gonna have to tell me if it's a warm or cold. <laughs> it's more of a green though, that one, isn't it? Vermilion hue. In Dantheron or Urn Blue. What's an Urn Blue? Is that like Iron Brew? We have Iron Brew in Scotland. It's a bright orange drink that is incredibly full of sugar. Havoc is in the sink again. Is that where she lives? She, like every time I speak to you, Havoc is in the sink. Havoc is Heather's cat, by the way, guys. Is there an in downtown blue? I'm just checking my no what's in there? Oh it's okay, don't worry. Eve Eve we're waiting on Eve guys because she's got the mail man. In Dantheron Blue PB60. Do we have? Yeah, Royal Blue is PB60. So that is in Dantheron Blue. And your warm, um, cool blue. Data asks, How long am I uh, planning to stream for? Probably about another hour ish, depending on how my stomach is doing mostly. Because if it gets um say look blue yeah um too hungry then i start coughing again have a whole bunch rebranded yes so they are new ones and old ones and i have a mixture of them so this is the old label and this is their new label it just makes the numbers a lot easier to see right so we have in Permanent Yellow Lemon, Queen Agadon Gold, Rose Madder, Vermilion Hue, Royal Blue, or Indantheron Blue, and the Thalo Blue ye Yellow Shade. Let's go! Uh, I need a sheet, I need a sheet. Do, 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 do. One problem with this tape though, it does like to peel really fast. So 
I don't know if you saw in my Instagram stories, but I was doing a big color chart of uh, glazing chart and I just kept peeling. Pan, yellow, lemon, green, gold. I'm quite excited to use a rose madder, which is probably why I was leaning towards trying Eve's one because I don't have a huge amount of experience with that color because it's a fugitive color. Uh, Ian says they have banned iron brew in some place. I heard that Trump's golf course have banned <laughs> iron brew from their uh, golf course in Scotland because it kept ruining their carpet. Which just kind of, yeah. Not trying iron brew before what it tastes like it, it's it's just sugar it's just an intense amount of sugar i haven't had it in a really long while but it's just ridiculously sweet and their sugar-free version is also very very sweet but it's this bright orange google it drink that is very popular in scotland and i think it's hideous But it's also like, like Scottish national drink, if we have one. So yeah, oh, I just need to some little bits of paint left. Right, permanent yellow lemon. Question, are there any other Japanese watercolour brands you might recommend other than Harbite? There's Turner. Turner is also a Japanese brand. They actually both come from Osaka, which is not surprising because they are way more like artistic, artsy, wild than Tokyo. Um, but also they're like, I think their headquarters are 10 kilometres away from each other. They're really close to each other and I know that one of the one of them moved headquarters and the old place where they used to have the headquarters basically made them only seven kilometers away from each other and basically they're like on either side of a river that runs through Osaka and leads to Osaka's um, universal so universal theater Universal Studio Japan. Here we go. I can talk. Honest. Right, so let me just put that back in the right places. Right, do we have the colours? Um, so yeah, there's always Turner. Although I don't have a huge amount of experience with Turner, just because I got into Holbein and my finances are limited. <laughs> so, but next time I go back to Japan, I will definitely invest in some Turners just so that I can let you guys know what it's like. They are certainly more affordable in Jackson's than Holbein is. Question, if you have all the available brands colour at your disposal, how would you build your palette? Oh, that is a really complicated question that I'm not sure if I can answer in this particular stream. But 
I know, I can tell you some of the colours that will definitely be in. Um, Daniel Smith, Queen Akudon Rose is definitely in there. And the turquoise, uh, Queen Akudon Turquoise is definitely in there. The, the Queen Akudon Gold, basically what's in my palette already. <laughs> I'll show you my palette. I'll very quickly show you my palette. Uh, Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, Aurelion by Holbein, Permanent Yellow Deep by Holbein, Queen Gold, Trance Red Oxide by Daniel Smith, Vermilion Hue by Holbein, Queen Coral by Daniel Smith, Scarlet Lake by Holbein, Pyro Rubin by Holbein, Quinacodone Rose by Daniel Smith, Bordeaux by Daniel Smith, Rose of Ultramarine by Daniel Smith, Causal Violet by Daniel Smith, Ultramarine Violet by Schminke, Ultramarine Blue was Dan's. I ran out and now, like, it's my own that isn't as good as Dan's. In Dance Room Blue by Daniel Smith, Indigo by Holbein, Thalo Blue Yellow Shade by Holbein. This is a random mixture I'm testing, but it's not working out, so I won't bother going to that. Prussian Green by Eve, Thalo uh, Turquoise by Daniel Smith, Hooker's Green by Holbein. Uh, Permanent Green 1 by Holbein and Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, Osaka is awesome. I, spe I spent a huge amount of time in Osaka, even though I lived in Tokyo when I was a kid, because my mum had lectures there every Sunday. So I would go with her so every weekend i spent in osaka and i love it i feel a lot more at home in osaka than i do in tokyo tokyo is like london everyone's uptight and everything has to be proper and osaka is a bit like scotland where you know things are more laid back uh it's wilder and more awesome i think Vermilion Hue. Dan, get the mulling. Yes. <laughs> Poor Dan. Wait, did I mix the wrong... Uh-oh. Did I mix the wrong one? I'll carry on as if nothing's happened. Royal blue. The thing about permanent yellow lemon is that it's got quite weak tinting strength compared to the Aurelian. So you're going to go through a lot more permanent yellow lemon than you would with an Aurelian. But it's still a nice colour. Oh, I did? It's this one, isn't it? Did I put Queen Acton Rose instead? I'm sorry. Let me know and I'll fix it. Well, I'll paint on top. Not on top, but, but like over here. Kind of quality to my first question, but if I decide to get a set, what other colours do you recommend? to get compliments uh which okay so what colors are you starting off with basically the best way is to <laughs> try like every time i design a palette i will design it i will start from getting the color wheel colors down and then make sure that i have all the colors that will complement those color choices perfectly and then I add in whatever colors I like on top is my usual rule of how to make a palette yeah rose mother rather than okay okay I'll fix that thank you Eve thank you for keeping an eye on me the Queen Gold by Holbein is a lighter colour, like 
it's more on the yellow side right so it's this one isn't it permanent yellow lemon there we go with vermilion hue which is this one there we go I was gonna say that is a dull I'm just gonna put it here so you guys can see it's a nice bright orange Yeah, if I had more time, I would cut a piece of paper and paste it on, but because it's a live stream and this is already a quite a slow pace one, <laughs> I don't want to bore you guys too much. So, okay, that is Rose Madder with the Kunakadon Gold. Nice. You're welcome, sorry for getting it wrong in the first place. What is my favourite place to hang out in Osaka? Oh, so many places! Um, Dot on Body, which is amazing for food. Um, I love Universal, Universal Studio Japan. And there is also an amazing aquarium. Queen Gold with Vermilion Hue. Vermilion Hue. Yes, we're getting it right this time. Um, there is an amazing aquarium across the river from the universal studio that has seals and any aquarium that has seals is a good aquarium in my books so yeah it's not my most favorite aquarium in the world that would be in okinawa island because they have a massive tank that can hold um whale sharks and in Okinawa, you can also scuba dive with whale sharks, which we did when we were there. So yeah, those, and like, I do believe Holbein does do, they do one tour of the factory a year and it's limited to 20 people. But I think if I get to go to that, that would definitely be a good, cool place for me to hang out as well. Dot on body. Is there a link for Dot on body you put up there for me, Eve? Thank you. Right, Rose Matter. It is a nice colour, actually. I can see why Eve likes it, despite its fugitiveness. Yeah, that's nice. It's much softer. It's not as uh, in your face. Yeah, I can see why she likes this. So, this is Queen Magenta and this is Rose Madder. This is closer to the Quinacridone Rose that I like. Why do you have to be fugitive? Vermilion. Let's get that right. Just need a bit more. Vermilion. Yes, Japan gets ridiculously hot and ridiculously humid in the summer. So I never recommend going to Japan in the summer. Like, just don't. Like, I'm born in middle of the summer. And I, I, I of course, would love to celebrate my birthdays there. But it's just suicide, really. So springtime and autumn time is the most beautiful time and the most comfortable time really to go over there if you are planning a trip do you use Samir brush auto if so any recommendations um no I don't at the moment but I might pick some up this is really faint hang on let me get some more but I might pick some up when I'm in Japan next. I used to do Chinese, uh, Japanese calligraphy. So I know how to use them. 
but I haven't used them in a while so like I don't know about what's the best brush and stuff sorry that's better yeah look at that rose matter might just redo that one as well because it's really faint Oh, hi, Pekka. Have you tried Rose Madder from Winsor Newton? Is it similar? No. Sorry. <laughs> you know me with Winsor Newton. We do not get along very well. I'm not the biggest fan of Winsor Newton, so unless I really, really have to, I don't tend to buy them. There we go. That does the colour more justice, doesn't it? nice yes I agree with you Anthony fugitive doesn't matter if you are an illustrator and you just scan it in and that's your product um, I don't most of the time I create works that are for hanging on walls which is why I have to worry about the light fastness of a paint but you know if you're an illustrator just use whatever you want. Royal blue. And you never have to worry about life fastness, really. Which is also why I can understand why um, Eve likes it. Because for her, because she does mostly illustrative stuff that she then makes prints of, you don't really have to worry too much about it. How's Pekka? Dan says, I'm not a Winsor Newton fan either, but sometimes they have colours which they do better. Do tell. Which ones do you like best? Now, Vermine Hue will neutralize perfectly with the Salo Blue Yellow shade. Makes it a really nice grey. Have I have I been to Hokkaido? Yes. Um, as a kid. <laughs> but where is my favorite place to hang out? The um, markets because you can get some amazing food and also I just remembered I have gone when I'm older there is a zoo in Hokkaido which I can't remember the name of at the moment but they have a seal tunnel so they have a big aquarium and it's really famous zoo for um, having come up with really innovative ways of displaying their animals and making enclosures that the animals are happy in and also display their animal behavior like to its fullest for us to see um that is an awesome place to visit if you can it's a little bit away from Sapporo but there's um there are buses available from Sapporo airport so yeah if you're into your animals and especially seals it's my favorite place to go and see seals because they look so happy and they have this tube in the middle room there's like aquarium on one side uh, there's a big tank on the other side but like it must be like a room within the aquarium with a tube and the humans go through the room and they have um seals have a natural tendency to like going through like tunnel places and so the seals will just go and swim through that all the time and then you get an amazing view of these seals going through full body Uh, Dan says the old colors are amazing I think they do a good cerulean, queen gold, sap green and Windsor Violet and 
uh, good from Winsor Newton. That's good to know. I do like their sap green, I have to say. But I didn't find them different enough from Holbein. And um, I can get Holbein obviously a lot cheaper than Winsor Newton. So, but yeah, their sap green is lovely. I have to agree with you there. So that is the Eve palette, we will call it. Just going to clean this palette while we are chatting. What do we think? Which one's the gorgeous blue? It's a, a little bit more muted palette than the first one we made. You're welcome, it's lovely. I love these muted tones. And this one, I mean, with any palette, you're going to get sets of bright colours and muted colours. And the reason why we get muted colours for this palette compared to the other palette we just did is because the Queen Gold is like a more browny colour. It's more muted yellow. And also the Rose Madder isn't as... Um, bright as the Queen Magenta but again really nice colours and you get you know a nice mixture of muted and bright which is my point with the, with the split primary palette in that it just it gives the beginners more control of when you get the more muted tones and when you get the brighter tones right I will leave this aside to dry and then peel. What would you like to try next? Yeah, Eve palette is nice. Which is why I wanted to like show you multiple options of different colours you could put together for yourself as a split um, as your first introductory set is because obviously what I'm looking for for a six tube palette is going to be different from what you're going to be looking for or what you know all the different people in the chat room or people watching afterwards are watching and so I'd rather just demonstrate this is my philosophy with my channel is I'd rather just show you and then you can make the decision rather than me telling you this is the best set because there isn't a best set there is a best set for me and a best set for you and I just really don't like it when teachers go you have to do it this way this is the only way because that's a load of lies with art the whole point is that there's infinite options and there is a best way for you and I find I feel that as a YouTube art educator if I can call that myself that my job is to just show you the options and then give you some background information so that you get the information you need and some demonstrations so that you can go out and make your own decisions about what you want like what shall we do next we've done Aurelian permanent yellow lemon so we'll pick imidazole Lean lemon, uh, maybe new gamboge. We could either go for pyrorubin or permanent alizarin crimson. Do we have any preference? And we've done, I'm gonna just take that out. Let's go for pyro red because that one we haven't done. Permanent Alizarin Crimson, yeah, we can go for that. Eve says, I kind of want to try a palette with Hansa Yellow Light and Deep Quinn Rose and Quinn Coral Thalo, th th Thalos <laughs> Blue, Red Shade and Green Shade in Daniel Smith. That might be really interesting to do.
Right, uh, blue, royal blue or ultramarine? I'm gonna go for ultramarine, I think. Yeah, and then, see, I'm not sure how peacock blue is gonna turn out, but the whole point with this is that we give it a try, right? So let's try peacock blue. I always find that for any art questions, problems, issues, the answer is always to paint. So we have Imidaz Imidazolun Lemon Cambodge Nova Nickel watercolors, yeah, they're good as well. Um, but are they? even light fast i think they're classified as poster colors and they tend to be not light fast but they're great um poster colors th that's what ghibli studio uses and um, as far as i'm concerned if it's good enough for them it's good enough for a lot of things i just um they are opaque like gouache as well i believe although i may be wrong on that And it's where I started in terms of just water mediums. And they're great, they're bright colours, they're a whole load of fun. Stephen Turner says, I think of palettes a bit like musical keys, you can change it, you're not stuck with it. I totally agree with you. Um, the whole point is that you just keep having goes at them and see what you like. Right. Peacock blue. Sorry, I got my warms and cools mixed up again. I mean, I am continuously, continuously changing my palette because every time you create a palette you learn something new about your color combinations and realize what's missing or what's like excess and then you change it up. Okay. So we have Imidazoline Lemon. Sorry, the sun started to come in. It was cloudy. It was cloudy all day and I thought I could get away with it. But um, the sun decided to come in. It decided to be sunny now. Anthony says, I'm an illustrator and find them best for my use. They work very well. I assume you're talking about the Nicker watercolour. Yeah, they're great. They really are. It, it just, you know, we all have different needs from our... Um, let me just concentrate. Permanent alizarin crimson from our uh, mediums that we use. But yeah, the nicker ones are really nice, really cheap as well. And that's why Ghibli uses them. Um, I don't think, do Ghibli use nicker ones or some other poster colour? I can't remember off the top of my head. And Eve just came back, so she'll be able to tell us because she is a Ghibli fan. Which poster colour brand does um, Ghibli use, Eve? Yeah, I can't wait for this peacock blue. Let's see what it's like. It is Nika, thank you. I thought it was, I just wanted to double check. So, Imidazoline Lemon, Gambush Nova, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Pyro Red, Peacock Blue and Ultramarine Deep. 
this is what I would call the random <laughs> the leftovers oh no not leftovers that sounds mean Imidazolone yellow lemon is a very very intense lemon it's very clear as well it's very transparent do you have do you always have well balanced palettes um for my main one yes i tried to have all the colors of the color palette so my current color palette color wheel looks like this and then i always make sure that there is a complementary color that can cancel it out and then i add all the other bits to it but now that i'm getting more comfortable with them i think i'm going to start making more specialized palettes gamboge nova and imidazolene lemon Uh, Dan asks, what do Ghibli use? I've seen powder paints in some videos and, and others watercolours. You have to ask Eve. Eve says they use nicker a lot for background. The powder was possibly pastel. There you go. I'm finding with the imdazzling lemon, it's a bit like the permanent yellow lemon in that, in that the tinting strength is quite weak. So I'm using a lot more of the yellow. Ooh, this is a nice colour. Hang on. I just, because it's a nice colour, I just want to get it right. And I have a little bit of orange in the corner. I'm going to get rid of that first. It's nice but quite weak. Let me see if I can get it stronger. Do you think that creating artwork with watercolour just squeeze out the tube has the same effect as using them already dried in? I guess it's palette. <laughs> um, I think there is, but I can't really tell you which way, like, is better. It's just different. Some people swear that painting from tube um, gives them stronger colors and uses less paints. Other people swear that you know drying them on the palette is gives them a stronger color and uses less paint so really it's um it's just one of those things where there is no consensus on which is better I'm just doing this today because I do have all the Holborn colors in palettes, but then I'll have to jungle, juggle lots of palettes and it'll be lots of noise. So I thought this is better for today. But I tend to use, um, pour my paints into a palette first, just because I like using palettes more than any other. 
logical reason. This is Gamboche Nouveau. The permanent alizarin crimson is incredibly strong and so it's quite hard to get a good balance. Would you be posting scans of these on my Patreon? Yes, I totally can. Yeah. If you like me to, I can post it for you maybe tomorrow, if that's okay. Awesome. Yep, yeah, I will post it on my Patreon page for all my patrons to have a wee look at. The peacock blue does make very, very lovely greens, it has to be said. Whereas the ultramarine blue is making more of the olivey, more muted greens on this palette. Right, permanent alizarin crimson, otherwise known as crazy bright, strong, intense red. Is it me or does this look a little bit pinker than alizarin crimson? I don't know. I just feel like they have, tend to be a lot more red red. Could just be me though. It is a lovely colour. I'd say it's halfway between the Rose Madder that we just tried and the Queen Magenta that we tried before that. No, I nearly used the wrong colour, peacock blue. There we go. Whew. Nearly made a mistake again. I have to say, I am impressed with the colours that the peacock blue is making. It's nice. Hey, Lay, how are you? Nice to see you. Yes, Dan, your mind is in the gutter again, isn't it? Come back. I am loving the colours that the permanent alizarin crimson makes. It's really nice. Right, we're on to pyro red. Pyro red is really bright red. Wow. Wow. That's actually nice. I might change to this one from my Scarlet Lake. I'm so glad you made it to the live stream. What time is it where you are? What? Hang on. Where is everyone from and what time is it right now? I 
I'm so sorry, my interaction with the chat is quite low at the moment. I'm still, this is my second live stream I've ever done. So trying to keep on track with what I'm doing here and following the chat is still a requiring lots of practice. Um, guys, I might have to add peacock blue to my palette because I'm really liking the colours it, it's making. Uh, yeah, sure, sure, it was a genuine mistake, yes, of course. See, this is like the boy who cried wolf. Because your mind is in the gutter a lot, we just assume that that's where it just goes. We're sorry, Dan. You know what? Doing this palette has taught me I really like Pyro Red and Peacock Blue. How about you guys? Um, Himawadi asks, uh, what DS colors would you suggest? One to two colors that I must get from, therefore, range really easy quinacridone rose and uh, daily turquoise. You won't regret it, I promise. Well, you might because it depends on what colors, you, what kind of colors you like, but um, those are the colors that I would always go for. Ooh, yeah, I'm really liking the peacock blue. The thing about Ultramarine Deep is that it's just not Dan's Blue. I miss my Dan's Blue. I have had a couple of goes at making the Ultramarine Blue for myself and it's just not the same. It's so sad. Right, so that's the Random's palette. I'm really, really liking the Peacock Blue range and really liking the Permanent Elizabeth crim Crimson and the Pyro Red. They might all become new colours I add to my palette. What do you guys think? See you later, Paolo! So it's 11 a.m., 11 p.m. in Indonesia, California is 9, Nova Scotia is 10 to 1, 4.50 for Portugal, Michigan is 11.50, Italy is 10 to 6, Wow, you guys come from so many different places. Georgia is 8 p.m. Canada is 11.50. Wow. Right, I'm thinking I might have a time for one quick last palette. Yeah, the Pyro Red actually is really nice. I might consider changing out my Scarlet Lake for the Pyro Red. But it's like a pretty cool red for a warm red as well. So 5.52 in Denmark, Taipei. Hello, Taipei. Sorry, I mean, <laughs> like, hi, Himari from Taipei. Um, my family actually comes from Taiwan. They're, they're all Japanese. It was a dark part of the Japanese history when we, well, not, I say we, the Japanese government decided to try empirism and uh, it didn't work out. But um, Japan took over Taiwan by force for a while and, you know, a lot of people, um, they encouraged people to immigrate to Taiwan and somewhere along my family line they did. 
and like my grandmother was born there and then met my grandfather who was also born there um my grandfather used to work in the city hall the red brick building um in taipei and then had my mother and then they had grace you made it hi i'm so glad um they had my mother and then world war Two happened we lost the war and we returned all we had to return all the territories and quite rightly so if you ask me and then so they then had to move back to japan but yeah basically or like all my mother's side of the family come from taiwan so it's really cool and we were there two three years ago we took my great uncle i know this is completely not art sorry but um, who was 87 at the time, and I'm so glad we did. We took it as a family. It was my great uncle, my mom, James, um, my auntie, uh, my uncle, who's not married to my auntie. They, you know, they're all brothers and sisters. And uh, we had an amazing time going through Taiwan, and especially Taipei. It was really, really awesome. So, hello. Oh, Grace, I'm so glad you made it. Right, since Grace is here, I will do one more palette. What colors would you like? Yeah, that is a really pretty building, the um, the city hall. Is it the city hall? The big red brick building with the ta clock, clock tower um, is a beautiful building. I'm going to peel Eve's palette. This is Eve's palette. Because that's now all dry. Uh, well, you guys mull over some colours. I can do. Um, um, Daniel Smith's one, if you want. Like, if you want me to do, like, say the Eve's one. If I have all the colours, I don't think I have all the colours though. I might have to mix it up. Let me know what you guys want. It's getting so warm in here. The sun's coming in. Oh, that's so satisfying to peel the tape. We like the stories. Thank you. I'm so glad. I have lots of stories. But yeah, it was so awesome. That trip was really great. Um, particularly, it was poignant because my great uncle actually died like uh, the year following that trip. So I'm so glad we went then. It's the present. Pre pre then presidential <laughs> i'm sorry i can't talk presidential building thank you thank you himawari so do you are you born and bred in taiwan or because i noticed that like you, your username is himawari oh that's so good honestly when i peeled that massive full imperial sheet glazing chart that i did over the weekend it was so good there we go that is eve's palette yeah i got re um, loads of great memories of my great uncle um which is awesome because i knew him as a little kid but then i didn't like because i'm over here i've never um really got to know him until we decided to go on this trip and then we went to see him loads after that and before that and really got to know him and he was such an awesome dude he was like so cool and he's like a no-nonsense hugely red you know very practical um my husband calls him a very kano guy even though he's not actually a kano but he's you know my grandmother's brother and it was so great that we got to know him so much I'm not gonna cry <laughs> um you know before he died and um i miss him a lot yeah but i'm so glad that we did it and we learned that he loved ice cream so we just got him ice cream wherever oh excuse me um wherever we went and every time his face would just light up and it was really cool so yeah i'm really glad we did that oh gosh why am i crying on live stream Whew. Sorry about this. Ah. 
Turns out I miss him a lot. <laughs> so Himali is not Taiwanese, just this place here. My passport says Malaysian, but I don't think I lived there long upon my secondary school graduation. I know the feeling because I'm the same. Um, born and bred in Japan, but I came over here when I was 10. So I've lived here all my life. I'm now British by nationality. So yeah, Whew. you guys are making me cry on live stream. <sighs> this was not part of the plan. <laughs> so yeah, I know how you feel. Um, did we agree on if we wanted to try the DS colors? I'm okay. Yes, I need a hand tag, but she's asleep. So Dan, unless Dory's awake. Oh, he was just such an awesome dude and like he knew so much about everything and um it's just things like he was so into mechanics to the point and he loved playing so much that when um Taiwan would get you know where he lived would get attacked by bombers like rather than going to shelters he would just stay out in the middle of a field and um look at the planes because he loved planes so much and um, he um, knows every gauge of every train track and the proper geek and I love him for that so he's awesome right palette last palette guys oh, thank you Grace sorry for crying guys <laughs> Are we doing the Daniel Smith one or are we picking from Holbein's again? You pick. We did three palettes so of Holbein, so I'm happy to do complete random ones now. Okay, I'm just gonna mute the um, camera because I need to blow my nose from the crying. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. I'll try not to sniffle. Okay, Daniel Smith. Heather is insisting with Daniel Smith, so we'll do that as our last palette. Eve, could you do me a massive favour and remind me the colours you listed, please? Oh, thank you guys. Thank you so much for the hugs and being okay with me crying. Uh, question what are the mixing colors on and where did you get it this one do you mean this one arty oh that's cool my cat used to, my boy called um cat was called arty so hello arty okay hands are yellow light and deep let me see if i have those i have hands are yellow light but not hands uh, uh deep let me see what pigment that is Honestly guys, colour chart is the most useful thing you could ever have in your studio. Hansa Yellow Deep is PY65. Do we have a whole one? Mm, don't have the right pigment, but I can see if I can at least match it by hue. somewhere between permanent yellow deep and I think it's closest to the iso yellow deep so I'll grab that sorry I don't have it iso yellow deep by Holbein where are you right and then queen coral and rose I definitely have those colors Oh, 
Uh, phthalo blue, red shade, and green shade. I know I don't have some of those. Phthalo blue, green shade. Okay, so I don't. I have phthalo blue, green shade for some reason, but I don't have phthalo blue red shade which is the darker blue right so can i replace it with ultra french ultramarine by daniel Smith, maybe oh no please don't um feel guilty about making me cry you do not make me cry i made myself cry by talking about my great uncle um so to the question of what this palette is well we're waiting for the answer um it's a serving plate that I got from a place called Wilco's in the UK, but like just any cheap shop that sells plain porcelain will do. Um, it's it was five pounds, which is what like seven dollars, and I saw it and I was like, that is the because it, it's so flat and um, have very little amount of you know where it's not flat and it was just the perfect size i think wilco's themselves have three different sizes this is the medium one you can get a smaller one and you can get a bigger one but this is for the um this is the perfect size for me but like anywhere that sells plain porcelain um plates should like have these kind of thing and i have like five of these because they, um, I have a problem, guys, with palettes. And it's not in owning too many palettes. It's in my anxiety that those palettes will stop selling. So when I see a palette I like, I tend to um, go for buying lots. But I always go for really cheap ones. Like, this is like five pounds. Okay, so we are replacing the red shade with ultra, French ultramarine. Yeah. So it's not exactly the colours we were talking about, but we have Hansa Yellow Light. How are we doing for light? I'm really sorry about this. <laughs> Hansa Yellow Light. I can never say this one. Isoidolinon. <laughs> This is why I always call it ISO um, Yellow Deep. Queen Coral, Queen Rose, Thalo Blue Green Shade and French Ultramarine. Um, the Essential Set Heather, I've already covered and did a colour chart for in my um, Tiger Travel Kit. So if you want to see how they um, mix, then you can check that out. Yeah, we all have our demons, don't we? <laughs> oh, you guys are so great. You guys are always so understanding. But I really have to do something about this light because it's ridiculous. Hold on. Don't freak out that it gets too dark because I have a plan. Don't worry. Is it too dark? Let me see if I can just adjust it by the brightness. Is that okay? Can you tell me if that looks okay? Eve says I can do the full DS color and then we can compare if there's really a difference. That it would be awesome. Yay. Lana says it's a great pr price for the palette. Yeah, I think it's a great price as well. Um, Wilco's is a cheap shop, so you're never going to get super expensive stuff. Let me know if it gets too dark, and I'll put the studio light on. It's just, um, if I put the studio light on, it tends to blind me. What's my favourite flower? Um, 
it's a flower called Gloriosa. You might have to Google that, <laughs> but it's my favorite flower to paint. Right, let's get on with it. Has a yellow light. Okay, so cool, warm, cool, warm, cool, warm. Yeah. Any questions while I'm doing this? Queen Coral is a nice color as well. I underestimated Queen Coral for a long time. Halo. Blue. Yeah, it is a beautiful flower, Grace. It's, I love painting it because A, it has really intense colours, but it's all the curves and folds and, and, and the way they interweave with each other. Really nice. Uh, question what is the country you wish to visit um, right now I mean we, we did a lot of traveling a few years back so right now I'm more into going to countries to visit friends I have rather than a particular country does that make sense so like um, I have a friend that we usually go to, to see at Christmas um, in Copenhagen whenever we can but at the moment because my husband is currently looking for a job we are like holding off doing any traveling until obviously he gets a job and we have a more stable income again. Hello Paula, is it raining over there? Can we swap weather? Because it's really bright out at the moment and it's interfering with this live stream. I will happily swap you for the rain right now. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Cabo Art Gotter, thank you so much for being here. And you can always catch up with the replay. What does my husband do? Well, that's the point. He doesn't have a job at the moment. He's looking for one. <laughs> um, I don't think they climb. The fl I don't think the flowers climb. It's kind of low. Um, I saw it actually being grown at the um, Royal Botanical Gardens a couple of weeks ago and that was really nice to actually see the flower like in its growing form I wouldn't say you know growing out in the wild but it's certainly nice to see like not in a bag in a florist kind of thing Yes, Gloriosas are beautiful. Um, I think my favourite one is the Gloriosa Rothschild. I think it's the one that I like the most. Oh, 
I'll see if I can pull out some paintings I've done. Do, do, do. I know it's on my Instagram. Let me turn off my internet so it doesn't interfere with the live stream. Okay, it's not on here. I'll have to go through my phone. There we go. Here is one. I don't know if you can see it. Hang on. I'm just going to go on autofocus so that this can, you can. Come on, you can do this camera. You can totally do this. Try harder. Fine, don't. I'll do it manually. Thanks, camera. No, you stay light. There we go. So this was done on canvas with acrylic when I was into my acrylics and then this is another one as well. I just really like painting them. Right, back to painting. Yeah, I sometimes feel like I want to go back to, to um, oh, thank you very much, to painting with, on canvas with um, acrylic paint. But the problem is, canvas takes up a lot of space. And yes, you can and do them, but then that's a whole lot of more work. Whereas paper, you can just stack them, which is how I got into watercolor, really. I was like, I need a flatter solution because I have a very small flat apartment. Oh, thank you guys. I'm glad you guys like it. Have you done them in watercolour? No, I haven't. Um, I've been thinking of doing it soon. When I get my mojo back again in painting, I'm, my mojo in painting is a bit low at the moment, which is why... I've been making a lot of colour comparisons and colour mixes videos at the moment because I just have to go with what my mojo is feeling and you know doing all this stuff is incredibly important as well for me in learning about paints because when I first started painting watercolours I just painted and didn't know anything about watercolours really Whereas now I'm actually getting the knowledge I need in order to make good decisions, you know, educated decisions, rather than just haphazardly going at random and then wondering why things don't work out the way I want it to. So I don't mind the fact that my mojo has gone for a while. I try not to push it or force it because that is one of the worst thing you can do when you're having a slow period like in the um, video on Monday I released I talked a lot about that you should do a series of all it, are there 12 different kinds of Gloriosa's Paolo. What do I think of dogs? <laughs> I like them. I like them. Um, they're awesome. Um, I would love a 
if I were to get a breed, like a dog, then I already know what breed I want, and that is the Cavapoo, which is the Cavalier King Charles with uh, mixed with Poodle. And the great thing about that is Cav I love Cavalier King Charles, but I would never have them myself because they've been so inbred and they're really unhealthy. Um, they have they suffer from serious serious health issues that are just the breed has a high chance of getting and if they get it it is horrendous it's horrific i once seen a dog on the tv that has that condition i can't remember what it is and i just cried my eyes out and i was just like i just can't do that i just can't cope with that you know and yeah a cavapoo um and yeah i just i just can't do it whereas you know when it's mixed with a poodle which is a healthy breed but to be honest with you knowing myself i would just go to the shelter and adopt whatever dog that needs adopting because that's how i've always gotten my cats i've always adopted um i always say oh i want this and i want that but at the end when it comes to crunch time i always go to the shelter and and give home to whatever creature needs a home first really and i like small dogs because i'm not confident that i can handle a big dog <laughs> like they're big you know and i'm not particularly a tall lady so yeah um my husband wants big dogs though so this is why we haven't got a dog <laughs> we can't agree on a dog breed and yeah i think if we do get a, if it's a choice between a cat or a dog we'd probably get a cat anyway because we're both big big cat people oh that's a really good to know grace thank you she says that um the bigger the dog the less energy they usually have Yeah, Lana says she basically did the same. We had preferences but went to the shelter and got our dream dog that was nothing like what we wanted but so perfect for us. Yep, um, I'm the same with cats. I always go, oh, I want this kind of cat and then I'll meet the cat in the shelter and it always turns out perfect because I believe that Universe will provide the right cat that A, needs the kind of home I can give it and B, that it's right for me as well. Weirdly, my family has a really long history of owning poodles. I don't know why, but everyone keeps getting poodles. My grandmother had two poodles, a white one and a grey one. Um, I think all my auntie has or have had poodles. Yeah, besides my family, you know, my mum, the nucleus that is my mum and I, um, and we never had pets because my mum can't stand animal smells, which is probably why I love pets now and I love animals so much. Um, but everyone else, every other family unit from her siblings, so her, my brother, uh, my auntie and, and aunties and uncles, they've all had poodles. I don't know why. Quinac go down rose, yay! Quinac go down rose. Oh, it's so good to paint with quinacridone rose.
thank you so much for being here, Himari, and thank you for like giving me the opportunities to talk about Taiwan. That was awesome. Yeah, I think poodles were just really big in the 90s or something. Which one, Vivian? The Quinacridone Rose? I think you should. I think everyone should get a tube. <laughs> really, really do. It's just such an awesome colour. I've tried a lot of quinacridone roses and permanent um, rose, which is basically the same thing. And um, just quinacridone rose, win the Daniel Smith's one just wins it hands down. Oh, look at that. Oh, so nice. I love my Holbeins as the bases to build my collection on because they are, you know, really cheap in Japan and they do good colours, but Daniel Smith is something else, isn't it? Honour is Otter's enable and nickname. What's on? What? What's Ono? Because in Japanese, Ono is an axe, so I hope you're not calling me an axe. Yeah, that Quinacridone Rose with French Ultramarine is gorgeous. This is why I like the Quinacridone Rose. You guys see why I like the Quinacridone Rose, right? It's just, the it, oh, it's so good. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, no, wrong, wrong, here. There we go. <laughs> you know, it's fine, it's totally fine. There are so many words that, like, you could create that sounds completely weird to a Japanese person, and that's not your fault at all, so don't worry about it. Queen Coral, Queen Coral is a lovely colour as well. It's like an orangey pinky really nice as well I have it on my palette as well But because it's a warm red, when it comes to making a purple, which needs to be a cool combination, doing the cool, no, cool blue with the warm red makes it a little bit more muted. Whereas if you use the cool red, it just makes a brighter range of colours. Yeah, Daniel Smith is pricey, but a lot of colours, I find, are just so worth it because they are so beautiful. Like Queen Rose and Thilo Turquoise. And then, hmm, what other colours do I find are really worth the weight in gold? The Quinacridone Gold is beautiful. The Transparent Red Oxide is gorgeous. In terms of how it mixes with other colors you can um, see how that mixes with other colors on my Daniel Smith color showdown I think it's the one that I compare with burnt sienna and something else 
and I think a lot of people were like wow that actually is really pretty and totally like transparent red oxide by Daniel Smith isn't a pretty color on its own but when you mix it with other colors it's a fantastic color Um, Otto, what's your live stream schedule? I'll set an alarm and get up early. Oh, thank you. Um, it's the same time that this goes on live, which you're on the West Coast, right? Which I think is 8 a.m. I put the time on my Instagram and my Twitter. So this is like my aiming slot. I always aim for this week, but sometimes it just um, health gets in the way. I wasn't sure if I'd make it this week, but I'm so glad I'm here and doing this with you guys because this is so much fun. Um, yeah, so this is like kind of like my slot if that's a thing, um, which is 3 p.m. GMT. And I will do my best to show up every week. So what's like your reasonable good quality art supply like what color brand in where you come from that's for everyone yay thank you grace right so that is I'm sorry, I'm just going to have to rescue this clean cloth because I have a load on that palette and I don't want to waste it. So I'm just going to, I am a stickler for wasting paint. There we go, that's better. Just clean this palette. While that dries. Uh, what's Paolo saying? None whatsoever? Oh, as in no good, reasonably priced art watercolour brand. Wow, um, that's hard in Portugal. Paolo, will you be attending the Portugal Urban Sketches event that I've been hearing a lot about? Yes, and that is a pretty good deal in the UK because you can get the box set and it is hands down the cheapest full range set you can get in the UK. It's still pricey. But it is the cheapest. I've done the maths by far in terms of like buying a full set thing. Right, so that is the Daniel Smith one. And my previous one is nice and dry, so I'll peel this. And then we'll do a quick look at all of them. And then I can let you guys go. Thank you so much for being here this whole time. Uh, I'll call this the leftovers palette. Ready for the peeling?
I know, um, Paula, I know Kremer is going to show up at the Urban Sketches event in Portugal. So that might be worth going to because they'll have lots of pigments and they're also, their ready-made paints are gorgeous. They look really, really nice. They re-wet super easily and their colours are all intense. They don't, you know, cut corners when they made their ready-made paints. Oh, so nice. Yeah, so I know you're not an urban sketcher, Paolo, but it might be just worth popping in to see, like, if, I don't know if they're the only art suppliers that are going to show up, but it might be a good opportunity to check out some art stuff. Aren't we all glad that there are good online art shops in this world? I don't know where I'd be without like places like Jackson's and Cass Art. So that's the leftovers palette. And I think, yeah, these are dry enough as well. So let's go. I'll start from this end. I think Winsor Newton, um, the chat is talking a lot about price of Winsor Newton, how expensive it's everywhere. I think it's just pricey everywhere. Like, I mean, it's technically a British um, brand, but it's not even made in Britain anymore, apparently. And um, it's incredibly expensive over here. Like, it's comparable to import brands, which just makes no sense. And for the price, I don't find their colour payoff worth it. I mean, to be fair, being brutally honest, I love my Holbein's, but it's because they're cheap in Japan. I wouldn't pay top rate artist quality price because like over here, Holbein's are comparable in price to Daniel Smith. And no, just no, you know? Um... But for the price, you know, if it was eighth of the price of Dana Smith, yeah, of course you'd go for that, right? And I do have to be conscientious of the price because I paint, like, large pieces, so I go through a ridiculous amount of watercolours. Like, I really envy people who can have all their colours in half pans, and that little half pan lasts them ages. No. <laughs> not for me I can literally like if I'm doing a big session of painting with lots of paints and big paintings I can literally use up like a whole tube worth of paint like collectively across all the colors I use in a day so yeah I do have to bear in mind of the price for myself so that's all the colors done so let's go through and then we can all go and have dinners and lunches and whatevers. So this is the Holbein's. Oh, we're a bit overexposed now, aren't we? Hang on. Yeah, that's better. So this was the first one that we did, which was the Holbein's introductory set. And we said that, well, I said that it's not a easy, palette for um, beginners to try and there's no ways of making all the secondary colors in a very bright manner and then we tried my pick 
which is so I'm going to leave this here is this and this was Aurelian Permanent Yellow Deep Quinacridone Magenta Scarlet Lake Ultramarine Deep and Thalo Blue Yellow Shade and this used basically the split com um, split primary palette And I'll just leave this here and have a drink well to see if you guys have any questions about this one. Any questions? Okay, we'll go on to the next one, which was Eve's palette, which is this one. So this palette, like compared to my palette, is a slightly more muted, beautiful colours, I have to say. Really liking these colours as well. Um, and the reason why it's slightly more muted is because the cool pink is a more muted color as well as the warm yellow is a more muted more neutralized tone as well gorgeous colors around here really nice you can come up with some really nice neutrals as well yeah they're all pretty it's a, it's like children you can't pick which one's your favorite really because they're all pretty they all have their own characteristics which is why i wanted to do a live stream and um, show you guys several options and then this was the third one or the fourth one we did which is the leftovers palette which is still using a split primary palette and uh, I learned that Peacock Blue um, do gorgeous mixes as well as Permanent Elysium Crimson. So I might be adding those two to my palette. And then we had the Daniel Smith palette that Eve suggested. The, um, the ISO Yellow Deep with the French Ultramarine has almost like split in colour. It's really interesting texture. The Quinacodon Rose, I don't need to keep saying it, but they make beautiful, beautiful mixes as well. So yeah, that's it. Do you guys have any questions before we go? You see faces on all the swatches. <laughs> because of the patterns. Would you be able to pick only three colours? Oh man, that is that is mean. Well, can I put on rose? Probably um Taylor Blue Yellow Shade, um, because it's closest to the cyan colour. And then yellow will be Aurelian. Does that answer also your question as well, Paolo? The last one's your favourite, Lay? This one? Yeah, it's nice. It's You can see the difference in brand here as well, because this is mostly Daniel Smith, this is all Holbein. And yeah, like... 
Daniel Smith is always going to win hands down in terms of color payoff compared to Holbein. So if you can get Hol um, Daniel Smith reasonably cheap, there's just no reason to try out the colors. If you <laughs> no other brands, if you ask me. Um, yes, Lay, I will be putting this up on my um, Patreon, the scans. I will probably do it tomorrow if I get the chance. If not, I'll do it over the weekend for you guys. So you can have a closer look, a uh, control lighting session, um, situation as well. Heather says for the three colours she would pick lemon yellow, quinacridone lilac and sailor blue green shade from, all from Daniel Smith. That is really interesting. I'm actually missing a queen lilac. I have to put an order in for that. Um, that would be really interesting. I might try that when I get hold of a queen lilac. Paolo says everyone goes for a CM a CMY3 color palette rather than a red, yellow, blue one. There's a good reason for that. <laughs> and that is in paint, the true primary three are um, magenta, yellow and cyan. Because you can make a red from a magenta and adding a tiny bit of uh, the yellow. So, I mean, you can do the um, the red, yellow and blue. You just won't get as bright a mix. And because I'm all about trying to keep the colours as bright as possible, that's why I would go for a CYM rather than a red, yellow and blue. But if you want to go for like a more muted colors and you don't mind not having like a cyan color or a magenta color in your palette, then yeah, do red, yellow and blue. Oh, he so Heather, is that the re DS's recommended CAMY combo? You're very welcome. Yeah, there's a lot of misinformation and um, even I have rants about this a lot. Whenever we see artists saying that with paint it's red, yellow and blue because it's actually CMY. Look in your printer. That's what the printer uses. And I think Denise is on board with that as well. She gets really stressed out if she sees someone going, it's red, yellow and blue. And Eve has made a live stream demonstrating why the CMY is a better range if you want to get brighter mixes than the red, yellow and blue. I mean, you can pick whatever three colors you want. And it doesn't matter if it's CMY or red, yellow, and blue. You just have to know why one is better than the other for what you want to do, right? And for me, I like brighter colors and therefore I go for CMY. But if you like, like you know, red, yellow, and blue, it's not wrong, right? There's no, no wrong thing over art. And don't let anybody tell you that there's a right, right way and a wrong way to do it. There is your way and there is everyone else's way, right? But even if you're the only person in this whole world doing that thing, it's not wrong. It's your way and that's correct for you. And that's all that should matter. You know, which is why I always like to show different options because, and like, show you like in detail of how things work so that you are empowered with the information to make your own decision on like what you want to achieve it's just it's frustrating though you know when you're trying to do something and it's not working out and you don't know why so like if you're trying to create bright mixes as possible 
and you're using a red yellow blue you're going to get frustrated or you know if you're using the Holbein um, introductory set rather than a split primary palette you're going to get frustrated and confused and that's what you know or that's what this stream is about and that's what I try to do on this channel is to just give you guys some information so you can make the decision sorry I know I rant about this I just hate it when teachers art teachers go it has to be this way it has to be this color you have to do it this way or it's wrong and I'm like oh my god just they just quit that's usually where I walk out of a class or switch off the class if it's <laughs> online um, I can like just as a last thing I can show you a really interesting thing with the triads it's a uh, Nita Leland stuff again But she shows you lots of different triads and then I promise I'll go after this um, and how picking different three colors affects the overall palette and with um, so this is again educating yourself about how to pick the colors so that you get the result you want so like with a delicate high key palette she picks aurelian rose madder and cobalt blue so you get a high you know it's a very clear bright colors but um it's delicate so it's not super strong colors and then you get the traditional palette which is the new gamboge um, cad red medium and French ultramarine and as you can see it's more muted so every triad is correct you just have to learn which is the one you want the bold palette she chooses Windsor lemon pyro red and thalo blue red shade And, you know, you can get a bright mix that is quite intense and definitely high tinting. And then Modern High Intensity Palette is Hansa Yellow, Queen Magenta and Thalo Blue Green Shade. The Opaque Palette is Yellow, Ochre, Indian Red and Cerulean Blue. So you get nice, earthy, opaque set of colours. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I, I every time I write this sign, I'm like, yeah, that looks like laughing break rather than coughing break, which is probably better. Oh, sorry about that. I think that's my body's way of saying hurry up. <laughs> um, I I've only got a few left to do. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry. You guys are all sharing your art horror, art teacher horror story. Yeah, I've had my fair share of, um, um, I don't know what the right word is. Art teachers that doesn't fit my way of learning. I'm sure there are other students who find it um, great to learn that way. But um, just, I get very frustrated by teachers that go, it has to be this way, and otherwise you're doing it wrong. Because that's not what art is about. Right, Old Master's Palette, like um, Van Dyke, uh, not Van Dyke, uh, who am I thinking of? Um, it's raw sienna, burnt sienna, and Payne's grey. So that would be like the old Dutch Masters palette. Um, my brain's gone to, of who I'm thinking of there. Yeah, it's really lovely. It kind of reminds me of... Um, no, no, brain's gone. And then this is the Bright Earth palette. So this is like the really earthy, smoky palette. And this is the brighter selection, so maybe like a old master's kind. Rembrandt, yes, thank you, Heather. Rembrandt is what I meant. All his portraits are like in these colours. And then this is the bright earth palette, which is queen gold, brown madder, and indigo. Modern low intensity palette is queen gold, perilene maroon, and indanthrum. And then this is like her traditional expanded palette, which is different colours for each spot. So she goes through a lot of different palette options. So I really, really recommend, if you really want to get into this, then um, yes, I think, Stephen, could you just check, since you have the Exploding Colour by Nita Leland, if you have it to hand, if that's the one where she goes through these palettes because I can't remember the book title off the top of my head and I don't have the book anymore so yeah so if you want to learn more about triads I highly recommend studying under Nita Leland um, because she's great for palette selection so yeah that's it guys thank you so much we've been on like a live stream for three hours thank you so much for sticking by and um, answering or um, asking me lots of really really interesting questions and um, yeah just you guys have been absolutely awesome thank you for being so patient with me coughing and crying <laughs> we've gone through the emotions today haven't we people so Kim says it's from Nita Leland's Exploring Colour Workshop. Yeah, I think that's the right one. Yeah, now that you say it. So if you want to learn more about triads and selecting palettes, then I highly recommend that book. Thank you so much, guys, for being online and coming to watch me do this. It was so much fun. Um, no, I really enjoyed myself. So I hope you enjoyed my, in, you enjoyed myself. You enjoyed yourself. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye.